a special edition of ABC 17 Sports Zone, live in Las Vegas, starts now. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Las Vegas. We have made it here for the College Football Hall and Day Fame induction of Gary Pickle. You can see the skyline behind me. We are in the Sin City. I'm ABC 17 Sports Director Natalie Jones, alongside, of course, Chanel Porter. Chanel, back in the studio, back in Columbia tonight. Chanel, we've been counting down the days, weeks, months for this day, and it's finally upon us. It's actually hard to believe it's already here. Finally here, Natalie. You'll be live at that induction on Tuesday night, but we have so much to get to before then. Tell us just what's coming up in these next few days. Well, tomorrow's going to be a lot of previews, right? But if you look on your screen, you can see we're going to be having a lot more for you guys. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you actually about how Pickle found out he was getting inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, what to expect on Tuesday and more. Tuesday is, of course, the big day. Gary Pinkle and the other inductees will all be speaking in a press conference in the morning. Then I will be in that black tie induction dinner. That's the big event on Tuesday night. I'll tell you what goes on in there, Chanel. I'm sure there will be lots to talk about and go over in the next few days. Yeah, well, as far as tonight, we have a lot coming your way. Natalie will have more on the historic career of Gary Pinkle in just a second. Also more on what Pinkle did before coming to Mizzou and what other former Tigers names you'll find in the Hall of Fame. Well, I want to set the scene a little bit here for you guys. Before Gary Pinkle got to Mizzou, the program was honestly in a bad spot. Get this stat. From 1984 on, the Tigers had 13 straight losing seasons. One of those years even had just one win on the entire season. Now, in 97, they did break that up with one of their first winning years in quite some time, but it was almost too little too late. With just two seasons above that 500 mark, Mizzou Athletics knew it was time for a change. And folks, I want to tell you that by far and away, our clear-cut number one choice. My responsibility, obviously, is to win, and I like to win. Look at this. Oh. One of the best-looking trophies from one of the most prestigious bowl games. Our new head football coach, Gary Pinkle. Gary? Oh, Got sunglasses? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This will really age me. Seven years later, when you started this journey, could you ever imagine that this was in the cards for you, that this is where it was all going to end up? I sat down with the all-time winningest coach in Mizzou history. I don't think you ever you ever look this far ahead. I mean, you do your job every your day, and, and you know, you, you, and then you do it for like weeks by month, and then before you know it, a season comes. And now, a Hall of Famer. It's been very, very overwhelming to me, and I'm very thankful, and I'm blessed. Gary Pickle's induction into the College Football Hall of Fame has been a long time coming. I expected it. Um, because if he wouldn't, then no one else deserves it. After historic tenures at both Toledo and Mizzou on Tuesday, Pinkle's name will officially be in the Hall of Fame. All-time winningest coach at Toledo, all-time winningest coach at Mizzou. What does it take to do that, you know? It takes, it takes people, and it mm -hmm. takes, uh, you know, people around me. Um, I've been blessed my whole life, and uh, there's nothing easy about it. It's really hard to win. It's really hard to win. And... Um, at the end of the day, you got to, you know, you got to just press on. He had guys that believed in him, even during the years that they was down. They didn't just fire him. They didn't just look for the next guy to step in. They trusted his vision. I think it's that thing where there's no fake, you know. I've had coaches where they, like, try to fake be your friend and all that. He never did that. He was never fake your buddy or nothing like that. But you always knew he had the good intention for you. I just try and tell him a lot of times when I see him, like, you know, you changed a lot of lives. Um, you know, I've got teammates that have, you know, said that, you know, if not for my scholarship to Mizzou, like that was the only school looking at me, I'd still be stuck in my hometown, you know, doing something. Pickle recruited players with the same blue collar mentality as him. He brought guys like me, which was a two star athlete, right? Would have never got recruited, you know, by Alabama, would have never got recruited by, you know, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, but he's seen something different in guys like us. That recruiting strategy brought him to what Pinkle says might be one of his biggest accomplishments. The greatest thing for me is my relationship with my players. I get the mm -hmm. texts I get from them all the time. It's, um, it's just a bit overwhelming, and it's, it's, you know, thanks, coach, thanks, thanks. Well, thanks, for, thanks. For, Thank you uh, from me and all the other coaches and all the fans because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have got done without all you guys. He was a true Mizzou guy, right? 
He didn't look at it as a stepping stone so he can get to the next big school. He wanted Mizzou to be that, that program. In his 15 seasons, Tiger fans saw 10 bowl games, 10 winning records, appearances in the Big 12 championship, back-to-back -back SEC East championships, and a whole lot more. My big picture is this is great, this is great, but I want more. Mm -hmm. So let's just go on. I am, and, and, that, and we did. We went to a very, very high level. Before Pinkle, Mizzou had won just two bowl games in the span of 18 seasons. I always heard about Missouri and people, why, you know, why can't Missouri win? Why, why do they struggle so much? You hear a program with too many seasons in 17 years. First of all, I'm not going to tell you what Nick Saban told me when I told him I was going to do this, <laughs> who I played college football with. But the point is, is I just felt, uh, I felt I knew how to run a football program. Everything was planned. There was nothing like not planned. Everything was structured in a way you felt like it was, um, you know, it was always planned out. It wasn't until I kind of left college and I looked back and, man, that was flawless. We are here today as a celebration of Coach Gary Penkel's career. We will talk about his decision and also his contributions. I was diagnosed uh, with fl follicular lymphoma. There's no cure for it. Uh, you manage it. The most important thing, uh, sorry, is, is my players. At, you know, in Toledo and here at Mizzou, um, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss it. It felt like the end of an era, which it was. It was like almost the end. He coached for almost an entire generation, almost had 20 years in. At the end of the day, it's about how am I going to utilize my time because I don't know if I'll be around here four years, eight years, or 20 years. While his responsibility now is to his family, as we walked Furrow Field together, Coach Pinkle still had a very deep understanding of his responsibility to his football family. I have a responsibility to build a program here and get a bunch of great people around me. We got a chance to do that. And I feel very blessed and a very difficult sport to do that, that, that we could get that done. But through all those accolades, honors, awards, and even Hall of Fame recognitions, it may be Jackson who sums it all up best. He's a bad mamma jamma. Bad Mamma Jamma is a great way to put it, Jarrell. Chanel, I have to say, you know, growing up in Missouri, seeing all that Pinkle did for this state and at Mizzou, it was awesome to see him talk about that. He still has so much pride in this university and Missouri as a whole. Well, Natalie, before his time at Mizzou, Pinkle was a tight end at Kent State University, where he was teammates, like he mentioned, with Alabama head coach Nick Saban and roommates with Steelers legend Jack Lambert. His coaching career began as a graduate at Kent State under Don James and spent more than a decade under James at Washington. Pinkle's first head coaching job was at Toledo in 1991 when Saban left for the NFL. In his 10 seasons at Toledo, Pinkle posted a 73-37-3 record, compiling three West Division titles and a conference championship in 1995. While Gary Pinkle is widely known for what he accomplished on the field in Columbia, there's pre some pretty remarkable accomplishments that he's been able to put together off the field. One of Gary's greatest gifts is giving back to the community, and that all started with the founding of the GP Made Foundation. Three years ago, uh, we were just sitting in the kitchen, and my wife looked at me, and she, and she just said, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. She goes, what's going on? I said, well, I miss my players. Helping kids was one thing that made Pinkle enjoy his time on the sidelines, and he knew that that couldn't come to an end at the same time that football did. He's found a new way to help kids with the creation of his GP Made Foundation. It's kids that, that uh, have cancer. It's kids that have physical challenges. Um, and then there's it's kids that, that come from really difficult backgrounds. While donating to organizations around the area to help kids, Pinkle has also created a renewable scholarship for low-income seniors. Not only is it helping them financially, but also helping their spirits, knowing that Gary Pinkle is recognizing what they've done. It was very rewarding because it was like, oh, he's recognizing that I did all this, like all of these accomplishments that I've have they're not going unnoticed over the past three years gp has been able to donate nearly seven hundred thousand dollars but his goals for this foundation aren't stopping there gpmade.com you can go on and you can you can go online anybody out there you can see the things that we're doing and if you think in any way we can help something that kind of parallels what we're looking for then just give us a call helping kids and giving back was always what pingle cared about his goals never stopped on the football field i'm doing something significant again you know i miss taking my players because helping my players because it was much more than trying to win football games 
after the break, we'll continue our live coverage from Las Vegas with talking to some of Coach Pinkle's most iconic wins and the legacy that he left behind at Mizzou. That's coming up next. ABC 17 News is now available on any of these streaming services and devices. ABC 17 News, where the news comes first. Are you looking for an exciting career? If so, then we're looking for you. Hitachi Energy is hiring full-time hourly team members at our Jeff City location with an average starting rate of $21 to $25 per hour. Full-time hires are eligible for benefits starting day one. An exciting career is waiting for you, so don't wait. Apply online today at hitachienergy.com slash career. Winter weather is here. Don't miss a single school closing or delay with ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather. Snow continues to fall all across mid Missouri. We're tracking the latest severe winter weather to immediately alert you to any closings that could impact your family's day. That's why we have that weather alert day in place for tomorrow. On air, online, and on the go, keeping you ahead of the storm. ABC 17 News and Storm Track Weather. Closings and delays sponsored by Kimna Collision Repair. Let someone you trust do the job right. Mario Lopez here, and this is Access Hollywood. Hi, my car was just towed. Just gonna miss your ID. It's actually in my car. Access to the biggest celebrity Ooh, look, there he is. Red oh, look at that. Yes, yeah, it's uncanny. Huh? I'm still gonna need to see your ID, though. I I'm right there. Hey, Mario. Mario has access everywhere. See? Yeah, I'm still gonna need your ID. Well, almost everywhere. It's me. Hey, I'm Mario Lopez, and this is Access Hollywood. It's close. <sighs> no way. Access Hollywood. Weekdays at 12:30 on ABC 17. Randall was working a triathlon, and he was hit by a car. He died six months later. There were a lot of choices she could have made that day. You know, she just hadn't been on her phone. It only takes one time, and then you've changed your life, and you've affected somebody else's life. Is that text worth it? What if you were responsible for killing my husband? When winter weather rolls in, the ABC 17 Storm Tracker rolls out, alerting you to live road conditions with the Storm Tracker 360 camera. Those neighborhood streets, those are getting a little treacherous. Tracking every angle, every move of severe weather's path, so you know exactly what to avoid before heading out. You're going to have to be wary for those drifts. On the ground and in the Storm Track Weather Center, we're working together to keep you ahead of the storm. ABC 17 Storm Track Weather. Welcome back. Well, Natalie, we could go on talking a while about all the things that Gary Pinkle did for Mizzou, but you actually talked to him and some of his players about this Hall of Fame induction. Just what did they have to say? Chanel, none of them were surprised. I think that's the biggest thing. They were all very excited. They said they're going to be watching everything that came out of Vegas from this college football Hall of Fame induction. But I asked them, you know, I mentioned some of these big names that are in the College Football Hall of Fame right now. You look at guys like Steve Spurrier, Lou Holtz, big names like that. that, even big names from Mizzou, Dan Devine, Don Farreau, those guys. They all say that Gary Pinkle belongs right there with them. He's not a step below. He is right there with them in the College Football Hall of Fame. They all say he belongs. So definitely no surprise right now, Chanel. Your package earlier that the many losing seasons that the Tigers had leading up to him coming in. Just when did that all really start to turn around? Well, it's interesting because when Gary Pickle came in, like I said in my package, you know, it was it was not a good spot for Mizzou football. I think one of the clear wins that you have to look at that was really big for the Pinkle era was in 2003, Nebraska. That was that was a big win for Gary Pinkle and Mizzou. Mizzou had not won that game for a long time. And then you look over at 2005, that's when the winning season started to become a bit more consistent. 2007, you make a Big 12 championship. You start getting more consistent in that. Then you move over to the SEC. That's a different ball game, but they did win back-to-back -back SEC East. I really think that Pinkle just invented a new culture of winning at Mizzou. And Natalie, just quickly, what do you think is the biggest part of his legacy that he's left behind for the Tigers? Well, it's interesting. You know, I think it's the blue collar mentality. You know, he recruited two star guys, not these five star recruits you see out there every day. He, he kept it with the blue blood guys that he could work with. 
Well, it's been quite some time since Mizzou had someone be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. The last was cornerback Roger Wuerl in 2003, and before that was tight end Kellen Winslow in 2002. Other players inducted are center Daryl Jenkins and tackle Ed Travis. Some other coaches that are on the list is Dan Devine in 1985, Frank Broyles, and of course, Don Perot. Pinkle will be the 13th Tiger to be inducted.